In this short video, I will be showing you how to create a buckling analysis of a thin strut that buckles through Euler buckling uh, using SOLIDWORKS. So first I will start by selecting the appropriate units. So I'll be selecting millimeters and seconds because my power dimensions are very small. Once I've done that, I can actually uh, rename my part uh, to a more useful one. So I'll just call it as thin Euler uh, strut so that I will remember next time that uh, what type of uh, part that I uh, geometry that I created so that uh, uh, so it's asking me that it can't be saved because I've not saved the part uh, I've, not, uh, I've not saved the file so what I'll do is I'll go uh, in the folder where I want to save it and I'll create a new folder as uh, end uh, fixed buckling. So I'll just call it so I remember later on where I saved it. Saved it. And I will name the part as uh, in Euler uh, strut. Right, so that's my part name as well. Okay, so now you can see it's come with that. Now what I'll do is I'll actually sketch the part. So I will select a plane. I'll select the top plane for now. And after selecting the plane, I will just use the rectangular feature because it's a rectangular part. And I will give the approximate dimensions here and uh, my X and Y dimensions uh, are here. So I've given very approximately because the part is quite small. So it's just easiest for me to directly modify the dimensions here. So this one is actually 0 0.56 millimeters, and this one is 9.53 millimeters. So once I'm happy with my power dimensions, I can just uh, I can just actually select this tick mark, and it will save it. Uh, after this, I will just quickly dimension my parts, and after dimensioning my part, I will. And ensure that I've got the right specifications and it will be constrained to this. After this, I will then now use the extrude feature. So I will use the extrude feature. I'll exit the sketch option. I'll go to the extrude feature and I will actually select my sketch, extrude boss. Uh, that's the one that I need to select and I will be extruding it along that. Uh, y plane and in this y plane it is 183 uh, and the units are millimeters for that extrusion so i'll just say okay so now you can see i've got a long thin strut uh, uh, so this is the one that i need to buckle so i will call it as uh, either strut okay now once I'm, I'm happy with this, I can now move on to the uh, actual um, analysis phase. But before I do that, because I will be later on needing uh, some split lines to apply my boundary condition. So I want to actually split this entire phase uh, into, into two. So I would use the split feature to actually do that now. So the way to do this, uh, probably the simplest way would be to go into geometry, reference geometry and then select a plane as, uh, as as our reference okay okay so first reference will be here okay So I can actually use slightly different way. I mean, I know I've previously done it like this, but uh, I can use a slightly different way of doing it as well, uh, which is given in the book. So
Okay. So I'll just use this front plane. Yep. And uh, here I will want to offset my plane to the middle. So I'll just say left offset. So now you can see the plane is actually passing through the middle. Okay, so I've done this now. Uh, and now this is a plane passing through the middle. I will use this plane and uh, it. Okay, I'll use this plane later on to actually split it. So this is what I will do now. So I'll go to curves, split lines. Uh, the plane that I want to use is already there. And I will just go for natural and then I will select the face. Now I can either select just this face or I can select the other faces as well. Uh, I mean, in the book, he does use uh, spread the other faces as well, but that will depend on the type of uh, analysis that you want to do afterwards. If I were to also plot, you know, some values along these planes or the other plane, then it may be actually a good idea to even have those split lines here now. Or we can also always create it uh, in later on uh, for the analysis purpose. But uh, right now, I will not be actually using all of these. Uh, I will be just using the one uh, split line that has been created on the top. So it's up to you. If you want to create all of them together, that's fine, because then you can always reuse it when you run the analysis again for other cases. For me, I will just uh, I will go ahead, I will split it, uh, all of these. Okay, now once I've done that, I'm happy with that. I can now um, yeah. So what I can do is I can just uh, now start my analysis and uh, to do that I need to go to the simulation tab. I'll go into the new study and I'll choose a buckling analysis this time. Okay, so instead of a linear elastic analysis or any other typical analysis that you've been running previously, uh, so we'll be carrying out a buckling analysis. Key thing, keep one thing in mind that the buckling analysis is, a, either, uh, is an eigenvalue analysis and uh, stresses and strains and other values that you get are not directly applicable. Uh, however, they are applicable in a, re in a relative sense. So I will call it as a fixed end buckling. Okay. Or I'll just call it fixed print strut. Okay, so that's what it is, and I will just save it. Now uh, the first step will be to actually apply the material properties, and to apply the material properties. I'll need to select my part, say apply a date. I have already created a custom material in my previous video, but if you want to see how to do that, let me just delete it. So I'll do it again for you. So what you need to do, go into the custom materials tab, uh, add a new category. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, I'll just call it as actually my steels so that I can save. Now the one that is closest in property to the one that we want to use is this one. It's got a very close you know, more or less to the one that the value that I want to use. Uh, but still, it is because it is spring steel and I've been given certain properties in the hand, handout and I want to use the same. So I'll just copy that material over here and I'll actually paste it. Now, after pasting it, I'll rename it so there's no confusion that I'm actually uh, changing it. So I'm calling it as custom or I'll just call it as my spring steel okay and since this is being drawn and made from this so i'll just call it from eisi 104 okay cd for cold draw 
Okay, so this is now the new name and I have updated the name. Now I will update the actual value. So I'll change it to 207,000, meaning it's now 207 gigapascals. The yield strength in this case and the tensile strength also needs to be changed. So I'll change this one to the typical value for the spring steels, which is 925. And this one I will move to 850. Although these values will not directly affect your results now, but later on when you do the linear analysis, static analysis, uh, you will be able to compare this with the, uh, to, to see the failure of the material. So with this, I have now applied it. I can now close it. And after closing it, uh, I should now, and the material should already be applied. So that's what it is. Now, well, once I've done this, I can now move on to applying the boundary conditions. And in this case, the boundary condition on the top is basically a fixed condition, so I, a paint condition. So I will just collect this split line. Uh, so the way um, we will be doing this is we will be using that split line as fixed. That means essentially the rest of the face is able to rotate about this fixed line. So that's why we are not constraining the whole face, rather we are just constraining this edge and that will uh, mimic a situation of a pinned condition. Um, we cannot directly apply the pinned condition on uh, uh, on this now we uh, we we can see if the the instead of just saving this now what do you need to do you need to go in the advanced tab and you have already selected the reference geometry here so that's fine that edge is what we need to to select but what you need to change though is is these these numbers over here so uh, so basically these directions so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are only constraining uh, along the plane uh, direction one okay so which is here so you can see this uh, on the uh, on the diagram as well so you're making sure that it is not able to slide along this direction so that's zero and similarly, you are saying that it's also not going normal to the plane direction, right? So two of the directions you have set to zero. So along the plane direction one and uh, uh, normal to the plane, you have set as zero. And the one which is along the plane direction two, that is the y-axis, that one you have uh, left as uh, unchecked, meaning that it is free in this axis. So now this will actually simulate the pin pin condition for this joint, mm -hmm. for this uh, yeah end. So with this, yeah. So we sorry, I just clicked OK without selecting the plane. So all the directions that we have specified are from with reference to the plane that we created, right? So that's what it is. So you can see the arrows are telling you that it is constraining it along this edge and it's constraining it uh, normal to this edge, but it's not constraining it along the length of the plane. So this was the, this is the main uh, important step here. Uh, if you also constrain it along the length of the, along the y-axis basically, that will actually re lead to uh, erroneous results in this case, okay? So with that settled, we can now uh, look into applying the, uh, the fixed condition on the other end. That is rather simpler to apply because there we are just constraining everything along uh, on these faces as well as these edges. So I'll just select this face, I'll just select both of these faces and by pressing the control key, I can actually also select my uh, edges separately okay now again you don't really need to separately specify the edge in this case uh, but uh, just to be uh, double sure I am selecting all the edges separately as well so now I've selected the whole face along with the edges and I can now go to fixtures apply a fixed condition here and here, if you see, I've not gone into advanced tab because it's already constraining all of the, 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 the degrees of freedom here. And I'll just say, OK, I'm going to look at it to, to make sure that I've applied it correctly. Once I'm happy with it, I can now proceed to applying the load on the pendant. So we will be applying the load on the pendant 
uh, that's where it will be uh, meaningful to apply. So we will be applying our external load. So I'll go to the external load. We'll apply a direct force. We'll apply the force on this face. Make sure you don't select just the edge. You select the whole face. Uh, both of these faces I will select, but then I will use total here rather than per item so that the total force is one newton. And uh, this force needs to be one newton simply because this is a unit force that you are applying. And then the eigenvalues that you calculate will allow you to, to will basically give you the multiplying factor that that is essentially uh, uh, will be equal to your first buckling load. So this is what uh, we, we are doing here. So unlike your standard FE analysis, linear elastic, you're not applying the actual value of the load. Rather, you apply a unit load and you get the answer in the form of a load factor. So once this is you're happy with this, just say OK. So now I'm happy with all of this. So now I can actually go and mesh my part. Uh, now I can mesh my part in this case because the part geometry is so simple. You don't really need to have a very fancy mesh, but it's really up to you if you want to uh, refine it a bit more or not. But in my case, I will just keep it at the standard uh, parameters and I will actually choose a standard mesh shape. And I to make it even more faster, I can even reduce this to four points uh, and it will still not adversely affect the results. Okay. With this, I can just mesh my part and uh, with my uh, meshed part, now I can actually uh, run this study. So let's run this study and see the output. So now you can see here on the top, you've got here, this is automatically listing the amplitude. Please keep this in mind, the, the actual values of these amplitudes, they're not uh, realistic, rather in uh, buckling analysis, they are only realistic in a relative sense okay so that's the first thing however the mode shape that you get is actually quite uh, accurate and you can compare that with the experimental mode shape that you obtain in the lab as well as you can also look into the exact mode shape equation of the deflection given in the uh, book that i have referenced uh, uh, for for this analysis and upload it to to read to so you can also compare it with that but overall you can see the shape is exactly what you expect from your experiment and the load factor is actually also what you expect from your euler buckling equation so it's very close to that so it is 17.481 if you multiply it with the one newton load then this becomes 17.481 newton in you can also view this uh, directly by going into the list buckling factor of safety and this is the actual value that you you have got so you can if you want you can copy this value to to any place and then you'll be able to review this later okay so this is basically uh, all that i wanted to show you in this uh, video uh, for the rest of the cases please follow the guidelines in the book chapter that i have uploaded separately and make sure you do all the cases then compare them for the all the experiments as well as your hand calculations in each case uh, after that what i'll do is i'll do a small separate video with a linear elastic uh, analysis of the same strut but by applying this load directly of 17.481 newtons thank you